Hello and welcome to this video uh, where today we're going to be looking at the first of three videos looking at the discovery of the electron. Um, so today we're going to have a look to see basically how the electron was discovered uh, from a historical point of view. Um, we're going to look at a couple of things that are all linked together. So we're going to look at what cathode rays are and how they're discovered. And they were discovered um, via discharge tubes. So we're going to look at those two things together first. We're then going to have a look at what thermionic emission is and how you can actually produce a beam of electrons. So we'll look at those three, th those two things together. And then this one links to any of these, but most commonly um, looking at thermionic emission. So when we look at cathode rays from a historical point of view, um, back in around about 1870, um, scientists discovered that if you took um, a glass, basically a glass tube, and you filled it with a low pressure gas, and it's important that it's at low pressure, then and then you applied so low pressure, and then you applied a high potential drift difference across this gas, then um, basically what would happen is the gas would conduct electricity, but on, and but also it would glow. So you would potentially get, for example, um, the the glass, sorry, the gas glowing at this end and glowing at this end. Um, and they also found that um, if you put a different type of gas in, then you'd get a different colour. Um, the reason for that is because um, this glowing basically happens because of energy levels in atoms. Um, and it's important that you remember your energy levels in atoms as a really quick kind of like a recap. Um, all atoms have got an energy level. Um, the lowest energy state is called the ground state and if you if the ground state and if the atom is has got more energy than that it's called an excited state and will be up here um, if you remember when the atom goes back down to uh, it goes down a level what it does it needs to get rid of that energy and it gets rid of it in the terms of a photon um, and the energy of that photon is given by the difference between these two energy levels over here. If you can't remember that you really really need to go back to unit one and remember exactly how energy levels work. So what they found is that so they when they did this experiment they found a number of things. So first of all that we got this 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 glow on this side and also a glowing part on, of the gas on this side. So you could see that they were for example, you'd get a red glow uh, if you had neon in here. Um, and so they knew that something was going on and, and it had something to do with the fact that this was in a circuit. So they kind of concluded that the gas was actually conducting, somehow it was conducting electricity. Um, now they wanted to know which way the kind of current was going. So what they did is they kind of put a paddle wheel in here. So they put a, like a little wheel on here that's got little paddles on it. Um, and what they found was that the paddle wheel moved this way. So they, from that, they concluded that something was going from the cathode to the anode, which is why these things were called cathode rays, because they thought, well, look, if they're coming from the cathode, they must have something to do with that. So these things are now called cathode rays. So that's where the idea of cathode rays. So that's where the idea of, of these cathode rays things actually came from. Um, what they also showed was that um, these things responded to magnets. Um, and what they found actually was if you put a magnet here, um, then actually um, you could actually affect this on here. And that showed that the these basically you had charged particles in the gas. Um, and also then if you put a magnet here, what was happening is that these cathode rays were being deflected in a certain direction. They weren't hitting this paddle wheel and it stopped moving. So that these cathode rays were definitely coming from this direction over here. So the fact that these things were affected by magnetic fields must have mean that they are basically charged particles. So these cathode rays, they actually knew quite a lot about from these discharge from these discharge tubes. Okay. So importantly, these are the these are the main points. The main points are that the, the gas glows, that when you put a paddle wheel here, it moved from in from the cathode towards the anode, which showed that the cathode rays moved in this direction. And that if you put a magnet near any of these things, then it affected the cathode rays, which meant that these cathode rays things were charged. Now, from a modern day perspective, uh, we can actually work out what's going on here. So what actually happens is when you put this high potential difference we, we have a high potential difference. What this high potential difference does is it actually ionizes the gas atoms. So it ionizes these gas atoms. So basically we end up with positive and we end up with the positive ions 
and we end up with the negative electrons in this now in this thing. And obviously, because we've got an anode and a cathode, they'll be attracted in certain ways. Um, so what happens is that the um, basically you get a glow near this negative end because you've got some ions over here in the gas. What they do is they attract the free electrons from the cathode and then they recombine to create neutral atoms. So, so the ions attract these and that gives you back um, your neutral atoms. Often these are in an excited state and then to get rid of that energy they emit a photon and when they do that, so they emit a photon and when they do that that's basically the light that you see. Um, the glow from the positive end is because some of these electrons that are basically removed from this cathode when they're attracted to all these ions don't recombine and what they do is they travel down here and if this paddle wheel's not here they get to this end and well, then what they do is they basically they can collide with atoms over here and what they do is they excite so on this side um, they excite excite the atoms by collision so you get excite, excitation by collision again because the atoms are then excited they want to get back down to the ground state and they do that by emitting a photon so you've got basically you've got these two glows one because um, you've got ions recombining with electrons um, in a higher energy level and then when they drop back down they emit a photon and then on here what you get is the electrons come along and they collide with atoms over here which means that the, the, some of the energy from the electrons is transmitted to those atoms, it moves them up an energy level and then they, they de-excite by emitting a photon, so you get a glow at this end as well. So that's basically your discharge tube and how it works. There's a second way that you can actually um, look at electrons, so obviously these cathode rays are electrons that move in this way. The second way you can actually look at this is through something called thermionic emission. Now what we've got here is you've got some you've, you've basically got a very simple circuit here and with this which is basically a heating element and then what you do is you apply again a high potential difference between the heating element and a piece of metal over here so here you've got again you've got a cathode here and you've got an anode here now what can happen is if you put enough energy into this particular circuit then these electrons that are inside this wire these free electrons gain kinetic energy so our free electrons basically gain kinetic energy which means they move around faster this means they can actually break away from the metal so they break from our metal and basically when they break away from the metal they then become free because they're then free they get attracted towards the cathode so for example this one will go in this direction and this one will go in this direction and this one over here will go in this direction and they'll be attracted towards the cathode now most of them will hit the cathode apart from the ones that are created exactly here and move in this direction like this one for example and what this will do is this will basically go straight through the hole and then it'll just carry on going in this direction so what you've done is you've basically created a beam of electrons um, once they're out of here so there's no there's no electric field the electric field is between the negative and the positive plates and so once you're out here there's no um, there's no electric field anymore so then they travel a constant velocity velocity through the tube so what we can actually do that is we can work out we can use what we know about electric fields to work out basically how fast these electron go electrons go because we know for example the work done by an e field is equal to the charge times the potential difference so if you remember back to unit four um, if you want to know the, the work done by an elect electric field it's um, to accelerate a charge basically that's equal to the charge multiplied by the potential difference between your two plates that that amount of energy is given and is transformed into kinetic energy and we've got a form of kinetic energy from GCSE and from unit two which is that so in other words this equals this so if we simply write that down we get this and then we can rearrange this and so we end up with our velocity is equal to the square root of 2 e v over m so e 
is the charge on the electron, which we know is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. V is the potential difference in volts, and M is the mass of our electron, which again we can go away and look up. So provided we know the potential difference, then we can work out how fast these things are going. So let's do a quick example. Um, here we've got, again, we've got thermionic emission, and we want to know the speed of electron when it's accelerated through a PD of 4,000 volts. So the difference between this plate and this plate is 4,000 volts. So we'll simply just put, basically, we'll put our numbers on. So if you can't remember the equation, you can, um, you can just write this down straight away, and then basically put your numbers in. So we've got a half the mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms multiplied by V squared, which is what we don't know. And that's equal to the charge on an electron. So 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 multiplied by V, which is the potential difference between the plates, which is 4,000. And if we do that, we end up with V squared is equal to um, 6.4 times 10 to the minus, oops, minus 16 over 4.555 times 10 to the minus 31. Like that. Uh, again, if we work that out on our calculator, we get something like 1.405 times 10 to the 15. So that tells us what V squared is. To work out what V is, we simply just square root that and we get 3.7 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. So we can work out basically how fast these electrons are traveling down this tube. Now there is a slight issue with this, because if we do a different one, let's, so let's have a look at the speed of an electron when it's accelerated through a potential difference of 1 um, megavolts. This is quite easily achievable, so let's have a look to see what happens with that. Again, we do the same thing. So we start off with our half mv squared is equal to ev. Um, if we follow exactly the same process as we did last time, what you'll find is that V squared is equal to 3.5126 roughly times 10 to the 17. And if you square that, you get the velocity to be 5.9 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, there's obviously a big issue with that because that is greater than 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, which is the speed of light. And as we know, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. So something's gone wrong. And as we'll see um, towards the end of this playlist, towards the end of unit, towards the end of turning points for unit five, what we'll find is actually that this equation here isn't actually right for when these electrons are traveling at really, really high speeds. And we'll modify this. But from a um, basically from a exam point of view, if you're asked to work out the speed of these electrons, what you should find is that the the velocity is much, much smaller than this because otherwise um, relativistic effects come into it and then and then you actually can't do it. Then it makes it actually really, really difficult. So if we go back to what we needed to look at, um, what you really, really, what you must be able to do is you need to be able to describe how a discharge tube works. So how this thing works um, in terms of ionizing, ionizing atoms and also the free electrons. You need to be able to describe how thermionic emission is produced. Um, and basically what happens to the electrons in order to accelerate them so you get a beam of electrons. And then you also need to be able to calculate how fast they're going simply by using the equation that we've just seen. Um, so that's the very first video looking at the discovery of an electron. Um, in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at we'll look to find out how they start to look at the properties of electrons and how they actually worked out what the specific charge of an electron was. Um, but that's it for me for the time being. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.